Joanna Stolotsky stared down the ambassador from the silly race and kept her shoulders back and her face composed, though inside she was tense. The silly were, according to the science delegation which had accompanied Joanna, a unique analog to the arachnid family on Earth. Standing at half a meter tall, the silly envoy rested on four spined legs that connected to a central bulb thorax where, Joanna understood, the vital organs and most of the nerve clusters lay. From that thorax rose a column of green-black chitin that sprouted six more limbs, that ended in a dozen claw-like fingers, and a head, that was really just an armored protrusion of nerve clusters that detected various spectrums of energy, and read the temperature around the sentient's body. The silu had excellent hearing, Joanna recalled, and registered sound as vibrations against the fine, glossy hairs around their nerve clusters. Best to keep her voice low, don't sound too agitated. She composed herself, and spoke slowly and clearly. Silu Envoy 3, we of the human race have received your directory's communication, and I am afraid we cannot accept your offer. I act as our United Human Federation's envoy in responding with a demand. Pull out your vessels from human space, or we will undertake military operations to evict you. The Silu were omnivorous, with an uncontrolled breeding urge that had led them to seek out new worlds to conquer. They were trying to strong-arm some of humanity's luscious green colonies into their territory by threat of arms, but the aliens were blunt and without subtlety. The UHF had seen this attempt coming for years, and had prepared accordingly. The alien ambassador paused, and then spoke through its translator. We can overrun these garden worlds, Joanna Envoy Stolotsky human. We have read the extent of your military prowess. You are admirable opponents, but we outweigh you. There was no emotion, for which Joanna was quietly glad. The Silu were a generally emotionless bunch unless they were in numbers, when their combined social weight led to a strange, higher-order communal thinking by which they governed. One-on-one, -on -one, however, they were exceedingly rational. Joanna was counting on that rationality now. You are correct, Envoy. We do not have your numbers. However, we do have allies. Joanna slowly pressed a button on the remote inlaid in her palm, sending the summons. With a soft chime, the door to her spacious office opened, and five more aliens stepped or floated in. As previously agreed, they remained silent, allowing the Silu time to sense and register their presence and identity. The Vord, Kalashium Ur, Zero One Collective, Trianu, and the accorded branches of Ur, stand with us, Envoy. The Vord representative broke form by loping forward to stand by Joanna. Like all members of her species, she was massive and further bulked out by being clad in her ceremonial carapace. Four heavy arms and two long, digiti grade legs folded themselves peacefully into a resting crouch, as the diplomat eased her bulk to the floor with astonishing grace. Joanna was incongruously reminded of her cat, Salazar, sitting down to polish out her food dish. Silly face, you will not win. You see the future of galactic progress in front of you. The old ways of territory and world trading are done, the Trianu prince declared softly. His quilled eye stalks were fastened on the Silu with a calm, predatory gaze. The prince's correct honored Silu chimed in the Vord. Her voice rumbled from her cavernous chest like a boulder rolling down a mountain. The humans are good neighbors. They give their friends guest rights, food and shelter when we are in need, and good trade. We are all here out of gratitude for their alliance, and you will face the might of the second Vord night fleet before one of your hives even touches atmosphere outside your territory. Basilu paused, clearly taken aback. The Zero One Collective were star-moving sentient machines. The branches of Ur were commonly accorded the title of Eldest Race, and they routinely conducted experiments on black holes. The Vorid and Trianu, like the humans, had risen from death worlds. The Kalashium Ur, also a long-time starfaring race, were roundly known as past masters of nanotechnology. Finally, the Silu envoy spoke. This union is unprecedented. Joanna grinned. 
our race bent on slaughtering each other. That we even have a functioning species-wide government is a huge achievement. Next to that, finding such wise and mighty allies as these is a simple task. The branches of her son nodded. Especially when they bring lasagna. Author's name and link to original text is in the description.